Mary. Okay. Remember Eddie Dollinger? It's his birthday today, 35. Happy birthday to Eddie. Perfect. Congratulations. Anyone celebrating an anniversary? Yes. Eighteen years on the twenty-third. Happy anniversary. <laughs> then may I also uh, add to all of these prayers, if you will. Um, and as I'm fond of saying that each of these prayers, these names are a story. Lots of folks, um, lots of folks, lots of so often so many hurts or hopes or well, you know. They, they call us and they want our prayers here, and so we remember them. Uh, Carol Mills, Sylvia, Molly, Sue, Gina, um, and, and Carol Bartlemay, all who have struggled with uh, strokes, we remember them. And then many in our church and beyond who seek healing. Uh, for Mary and Bill and Vincent, Philip and Jerry, Victor, and Joe, for Chris and her grandbabies, we remember, for Julie and Kathy and Rick, Anna, Tom, we remember Tom, keep Tom in prayers, um, struggles with cancer, for Marion, Eric Dunkel, also struggling with, needs prayers, young man with cancer, Lisa, Hannah, Tara Linsmeyer, Kyle Donlinger, Ross and Sandy, for Alan and Elaine Hansen, that they continue to mend, for Michael, that he continues to grow in strength, for Connie Goulash, Barb, Amy, remember Al Foreigner, for Albert in a special way at this hour of his life, for Tina and Jason Priggy, for Larry and Jean, Christine and Tony, Little Silas, we keep in our prayers. For Jean and David, John and Jim, Karen and Joyce Sr. For all the recipients of organ donations and those anticipating organ transplants, we remember them and we keep their families and surgeons in prayer. For all those celebrating the sacrament of marriage, especially Alex Ahola and Tally Piaskowski, may they be blessed with great joy. For all the baptized, especially Uncle Valentin Perez Gonzalez and Ariel Allen Moreno Wilhelm, may they and their families overflow with an abundance of God's love. And so we gather all of these prayers and so many more as we come together here on this 25th Sunday of the season of Ordinary Time. And so let's rise, greet our neighbor if we so desire, and we'll begin our worship formally in a moment.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gather together for our Eucharist once again. We gather to celebrate the only gift in life that matters, that our God is so deeply in love with us. Once again, we pause and we recall our week. What have we done? What have we failed to do? And let us pray once again the strength and the pardon that we need to change our lives and embrace the Lord in our hearts. You cast the mighty from their thrones. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You lift up the lowly to high places. Christ, have mercy. mercy. To the hungry, you give every good thing. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Let us sing God's praises. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us be seated once more to be nourished by God's Word. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test. 
that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every fall practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceful, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. Then they came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed the child in their midst, and putting his arms around the child, He said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a a little note before we begin. I know that so many of you were looking at the text and Jesus said he took the child and placed it in his midst and then put his hands on it. Ha! No wonder we kill children. It? Now, so the child, the child, okay? In Greek, that it isn't a good translation. All right. I just had to say that and get that off my chest. Why would you use an impersonal neuter pronoun? Okay, for a person. The Gospel of Mark, the message is simple this afternoon. And what's simple is it's rather humorous. It's the second weekend in a row, if we're paying attention, and we are, it's the second weekend in a row that Jesus said, the Son of Man has to be handed over He's going to be killed and on the third day. And what was the disciples' response? They didn't understand that he must suffer, be handed over, suffer, die, and rise. If you ever heard the phrase, the Paschal Mystery, I know you have, the Paschal Mystery, Paschal, Easter, That's the heart of our faith. Jesus, literally, at the beginning of this passage of John, said, the Son of Man, him, is going to be handed over, he's going to be beaten, spit on, he's going to suffer, crown of thorns, whipped, the whole thing. He's going to be killed. They're going to put him in a tomb, and he's going to rise from the dead. That's called the Paschal Mystery. That's at the heart of our faith. So now you know, whenever you hear, if I would ever, or Deacon Steve would ever say, or anyone who teaches says, Paschal mystery, now you know what it means. Isn't that great? Now you know. Contrast that to getting in the house in Capernaum. And Jesus says, what are you arguing about? Isn't that delicious? It's humorous. These great men... They're so important. 
these great men were talking about who's the most important, and Jesus just gets done saying, here's the heart of the faith, believe me. And they didn't understand. It's almost humorous. Who's the greatest? Which one was the greatest? Isn't that, isn't that unbelievable? But isn't that true even in our lives today? Who here, don't, I don't want to know, who here wants to be the best? Mm. Who struggles to want to be the best? It reminds me when I was in high school, we used to have a cheer when I was out the high school seminary and we'd play Manitowoc. California oranges, Texas cactus, we play Manitowoc just for practice. <laughs> that's going to be online now. I'm going to pay for that. <laughs> but that's okay. Think about that. We want to be the best. We're number one. Want the best quarterback. Want the best. Everything's the best. And we're going to climb that ladder because it's all about our honor. And when we don't get honored like everyone else, how come you're honored more than I am? And our ego takes over. And we're wounded. And we're just like that bunch. When Jesus simply says, this is the heart, this is what I've come for. No wonder I'm bald. Because it takes me a while in life to get it. And so I've learned to be patient with others as God has been with me. It's almost humorous. We almost teach our children that too, don't we? After a while, because they just, they're going, oh, wow, look at that rock. And children will look at a rock and you're going, come on, do something useful. We cut that right out of them right away. Learn to climb the ladder. Don't have just joy. I'll never forget that somebody literally asked about someone, just someone, and said, what do you like about her? That person's nice. Do you know what the response was? Is that all? Is that all? No powerful deeds? Right? No wonder the disciples didn't get it. Because they were busy climbing the ladder of their own ego. Because they missed the whole point that the kingdom of God is not what they thought. Watch the chosen. The kingdom of God is not what they thought. And when you and I have been trained mentally all these years to climb, and it's in every walk of life, right? Doesn't every teacher want to be a principal? Pam says no. All right, not every teacher wants to be a principal, right? And every priest wants to be a monsignor and wants to be a bishop and wants to be an arch and wants to be... Climb every mountain. It's in everything we do. I have the biggest, I have the best. We don't get it. We don't get it. Let me close with this. This is what I want to say. In all three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the children's story is here. Why would he bring a child? In the midst of their bickering, he takes a child, and in the day of Jesus, a man owned three things. Quote me on this. His land, his wife, and his children. That was the property a man owned. His land, his wife, and his children. That's how they were viewed. Children had no, absolutely no standing at all. They were kicked like dogs. Get out of here, you street urchin. They were th no standing. And he takes a useless one who's nothing, places a useless one in, his, in their midst. <laughs> ah, but they didn't get that either. He puts a useless one in their midst, and he said, unless you are childlike, not childish, I want, that's ego. Because a child is totally dependent. Go ahead, don't you, everybody leave two-year-olds alone? Infants? 
happens in our world, right? Leave an infant, go on vacation, come back. Oh, the child died. What happened? He made a nobody into somebody. And he said, if you really want to be my followers, then that's what you have to be like. How beautiful is that? How absolutely marvelous. That's why that struck me in this gospel. How humorous. He starts with something glorious and the disciples couldn't find it. They will. They do. It takes time. That's why I'm patient. I'm patient with everyone, including myself. So, isn't that amazing? Let's not climb the ladder. I think we have more solid footing and foundation in Christ, not in human wisdom, not in all of this glory. That means nothing, but being in Christ is everything. And you can't do better than that. Can you? Amen. Let us rise and once more profess our faith and proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is to you, good and gracious God, that your daughters and sons turn once more this day. Guide us, be our strength, as we offer these humble prayers that we place before you now. For the leaders of Christ's Church, who humbly serve with wisdom and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations torn apart by war and civil unrest, who seek peaceful alternatives to violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges, advocates, and civil servants, who uphold the rights of the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people who hunger and thirst for justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus stirs the hearts of our youth and young adults to inspire them to lives of service and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this assembly, who find joy in God's commandments and peace in God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, for all the intentions in our prayer request book, and in particular for Lee Bacchus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the heavens and the earth, to you we offer praise for so many gifts that you share. Give us strength, encourage us, guide us by the power of your spirit 
to truly be childlike and therefore enter into your kingdom with joy, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all be seated as our sacred altar table is clothed and prepared once more. rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. Each day you show us an ever deepening love of God. Your Holy Spirit, dwelling deep within, gives us here on earth the hope of unending joy. In thankful praise with the company of the angels, we glorify the wonders of your power and sing. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, yes, you the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our bishop, and all of your humble servants. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That's with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Thomas, and with all the saints, who please you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us all rise, for it is at the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace, unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Let us share a joyful sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all unto everlasting life. Amen. Jamie, we send you forth with the love of this community and with Eucharist, the bread of life, it's food for the journey. As you go and visit El, may you send our prayers and our love with him and that you bring the greatest gift, Viaticum, the gift of his very self. May you be blessed in your journey.
just two things to share with you. I uh, want to keep in prayer our confirmation students that tomorrow they are going to enroll their names in the book of the elect. So we want to pray for our high school seniors um, who are going to be sharing, experiencing what our ancestors called the great sealing or the great chrismation. And so that confirmation for them is the last Saturday of January in Manitowoc. So tomorrow at 8 o'clock, they'll enroll their names. And finally, so we keep them in prayer. So that's why I mention. And finally, um, a reminder from uh, the script folks is that Quick Trip is um, giving 10% of all profits again for the month of September. Uh, and in two weeks, uh, we have, the church has realized over $1,000. So again, um, that's just profit from you filling up your gas tank. So if that's something you would like to do, see the script window. They have plenty, um, and there'll be plenty more to come for this month. And that typically is a, is a wonderful boost for us as well, okay? Just so you know. Are there young people ages 3 to 12 that would sit with me at the step just for a moment? If I did that, they'd have to call the doctor. <laughs> Aren't there lots of things in life sometimes that we don't understand? I was waiting. I knew you'd come. You're going to go far. Now this man knows how to take the highest place in a good way. Sometimes there's things, even at my age, at 68 years old, I don't understand. And I go to bed at night sometimes and I say, Lord, I don't understand. I wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I don't understand. I don't know. And how many times have you said to your parents, maybe, why? Why do we have to do this? Why do I do this? Why? Maybe sometimes you ask even deeper questions like, why did my classmate have to become sick? Mm. Why? Why is this like this? Those are deep questions. And that's why we pray. That's why we come here and we pray. Because we hope that the Lord will give us answers to deep questions that we don't even know the answer to. But you know what the beautiful thing is? I'll stop with this. You know what happens in our world sometimes? Somebody says this, Ah, oh, that's dumb. I don't believe that, so I'm not going to worry about that. Wow. Just because I don't understand something doesn't mean it's not real. Can you try to remember that? Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it's not real. It is real. It really is. You have to trust me on that one. It really is real. Whoops. That's for you, sister. Oh, I won't forget you. And that's for you. This is for you. Don't forget, we love you very much. That's for you. Thank you. And you, sir. I always tell you that we love you because, because we do. Why do you pass that on? Thanks. Thanks for coming to the step. Everybody got one? Good. Boys and girls, someday you're going to say that to your algebra teacher. You don't understand. That means you got to work hard to understand. I still don't understand algebra. Let's rise and let us pray. Graciously raise up, O oh Lord, those you renew with this sacrament that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our very lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray this St. Michael prayer found on the inside cover of the hymnal. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. May thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, 
thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.